What is up? What is up? And today we will be reviewing, finally doing my death discography review. The uh, I am really sorry. This is really late, but unfortunately, some things came up, and uh, I'm finally going to be able to do this. So, shall we begin? First up, we have. Oh, we're in a cat, by the way. Uh, first up, we have. Uh, with their first album, Scream Bloody Gore. Oh. Now let's look a little bit at the background first of uh, the metal scene, particularly the extreme metal scene. At the time, thrash metal was starting to really gain a huge following both critically and commercially. And uh, bands like uh, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, Slayer, you know the big four, also Overkill and um, Testament with also the German bands such as uh, Create or Sodom and Destruction we're getting huge praise in the metal world for this very heavy uh, st sound but also at the same time we're getting not only praise from the community itself but from other critics and of course the mainstream for starting to sell platinum albums and selling albums in the hundreds of thousands there was so though a group of metal fans that wanted something a bit more uh, aggressive, something darker. They want, they liked the sound they heard on Cl uh, Creator and uh, Slayer records, but they wanted something uh, double that, heavier, more aggressive, less melody. And that's where kind of death comes in, really in the beginning with Chuck and crew. And when this album f uh, first came out, the scene at that time was really thrash oriented, and you can tell a little bit from there they haven't. Uh, quite found their sound at that point in time. But what they did do is take all the influences of the bands they loved and just threw them into this record. Gave it an incredibly heavy, suffocated, uh, under almost underproduced feel to it. Some really aggressive riffing that not even th that would give the best Slayer song run for its money at that time. Songs like Zombie Ritual, um, Infernal Death, shit like that that was incredibly heavy and just had that rawness that I felt that uh, Creator or um, even uh, Slayer couldn't give, not nearly at the time or even say beyond that. This album would uh, show that Death had the talent, not only the talent, but just the overall uh, memorability to stand out in the community at that time as far as extreme metal went. Um, with the whole thrash genre. This album, Scream Bloody Gore, you can tell straight from the picture it's dark, it's dingy, it's cold, ugly, and heartless. But at the same time, it's also something that needs to really have applause to it. Because this was something when it came out that completely shocked the metal world. Because you had nothing, I mean nothing, that sounded that extreme or that aggressive. Uh, even Slayer fans were kind of, and Creator fans, because I'm using those bands, because uh, they were the most heaviest, and those were the bands that had the least amount of melody, and focused more on just insanely heavy, fast rifting, were kind of uh, with jaws to the ground, just because of the sheer aggression. But you can also see some of Chuck's and the crew's geniusness at that time, because during that, uh, you can ch check on some of the songs, there's still melodies, there's harmonies within little uh, higher note sections. I'm not going to name any specific song, but you can hear them. Um, uh, that kind of mixed in kind of shows where Death would go on with later releases and into eventually the end of their career with that sort of complication, but still that's uh, very cold, ugly, very dark, wrought into the core sound. This is also, including uh, Leprosy, considered by many to be uh, Death's worst album, or n not up to par with some of the other albums. Uh, for me, from the either Leprosy or uh, Scream Bloody Gore, um, I'm going to say Scream Bloody Gore, because that to me, it, had, it was the first Death record, it was a lot colder, a lot harder. Um, the riffing wasn't uh, as stale, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, I felt like on this album, when this started, from the minute I heard this death album, that you were in for some of the most raw and pure uh, proto-death metal at the time. Sure, you had bands like Possessed, who years earlier released uh, Seven Churches, another very influential album on the death metal as a whole. But this album, I felt it was the first real death metal album, or the first real old, uh, old school sound, what would evolve into all these different bands later on. This had the aggressive riffing, but it was... Uh, I'm going back to the riffing because this is what truly makes death metal. The drumming, obviously thrash influence, but again had a very heavy suffocating feel to it. And that's what they really tried to go for in this album. A very 
uh, suffocatingly heavy, but at the same time something new and refreshing. It had enough to stand out in the community and in the uh, uh, extreme metal community as a whole. And from that point on, um, bands of this extreme caliber, this death metal, would start showing up at an incredible rate and just forever changing the metal scene. But this right here, Scream Bloody Gore, was the one that started everything. Without this album, or Seven Churches, there would extreme metal like this would not have come in such uh, wide varieties or even uh, quality. This was an album that was extremely influential on the metal community uh, members that were um, looking for something much more aggressive than your typical thrash album. They wanted something uh, dark, almost sounding like the soundtrack to being ripped apart by rabbit wolves. And this album kind of symbolizes that. Uh, with the skeletons in the front drinking what looks to be the blood of Christ. And really just... <sighs> very good album. <sighs> that didn't take too long. Um, so next time, hopefully around this week, I will be doing uh, Leprosy. The second and last album in the uh, Death's 80s years. And uh, that should be an interesting thing to look at. And yeah. Subscribe, comment. Peace. Keep it metal.